Kia ora everyone, welcome. I'm Helena Davis. Recently I sent an email out asking for help around what's your biggest struggle in relation to your gut health for a program that I'm developing. Thanks so much to everyone who responded. You guys are all awesome. The top responses I had were constipation, food choices, especially when you're rushed, and how do you monitor your gut signs and your body, and abdominal bloating. I'll be covering the first three points in really short vlogs over the next two weeks to give you some guidance around these. I'm also putting together a PDF around bloating to send to you all to help you all out. So in this vlog, I'm going to share with you to how do you monitor your gut signs and symptoms. Obviously, this is a huge topic, but I'd like to give you some key pointers that you can do at home so that you can monitor this yourselves. First, let's talk about your tongue. Your tongue is a great sign of what is actually going on in your gut. Poke your tongue out for a moment in front of a mirror and have a really good look at it. Your tongue should be a pink colour with a very light, white, moist coat on it. It shouldn't have any cracks, ulcers or teeth marks on the sides. Your tongue shouldn't quiver, tremble, move from side to side or curl up without you actually trying to do this. If you have a white or yellow coating on your tongue, this can be a sign of gut imbalance, especially yeast overgrowth or bacterial overgrowth. If you have lots of cracks in your tongue, this is a sign of poor gut integrity, which is essentially your skin on that hollow tube that is going all the way through you. If you have ulcers on your tongue, this is a sign of stress and low B vitamins. It's also really common to get cracks in the corner of your mouth right here at the same time as ulcers in your mouth or on your tongue. Teeth marks on your tongue, they appear on the sides, can be related to a number of different things such as low iodine, low thyroid function, water retention, and spleen deficiency. If you poke your tongue out and it shakes, either you have just had some caffeine, you're low in minerals such as magnesium and calcium, or your nervous system is in overdrive. Your nervous system is massively linked to your gut, as you'll learn throughout all of my vlogs. Secondly, let's talk about you monitoring your bowel motions. Everybody's favourite topic. I reckon about a quarter of the people I see in clinic don't want to look at their stools because they think it's gross. Why would I do that? That's the last thing you want to do. I quickly do it and look away and flush the toilet. It's actually one of the best signs in monitoring your gut and what's happening on your insides. I'll share with you briefly what different things mean in your stools. Now, a normal stool is mid to dark brown in colour, formed like a sausage, soft and easy to move, and it sinks to the bottom of your toilet bowl. There should be no blood or mucus in your stool. If your stools are floating on top of the water in your toilet bowl, it's a sign that you aren't digesting your fats properly. A really way to remember this is just think of what happens if you mix oil and water together. Oil floats to the surface. This is essentially what is happening when your stools float as well. If your stools are green in colour, this can be a sign that you aren't digesting your foods and they're moving way too quickly through your gut. If your stools are greasy and yellow in colour, this is a sign that you have a really high fat content in your stools and you aren't digesting your fats properly. If your stools are white or grey in colour, this can indicate a dairy intolerance or that your liver is overloaded. If your stools are black in colour, this can indicate blood in your stools from your stomach region, which is further up in your gut and is basically blood that's been digested and broken down throughout your digestion. Now if you are taking iron supplements, they can turn your stools black. If you eat heaps of beetroot, 
this can give your stools a red tinge. Or if you hate, eat heaps of green leafy vegetables, this can also give your stools a green colour. Thirdly, let's look at your nails. Your nails should be slightly pink and strong and have lunars on all your fingers. They shouldn't have any pinholes, ridges down or across, no spoon shapes on the top or little white dots or large white dots. If you have ridges down your nails, this can be a sign of low silica levels or low stomach acid. If you have lots of little white dots on your nails, this can be a sign of low zinc levels in your body. If your nails peel really easily and are really soft, this can indicate that your liver isn't functioning 100%. If your nails look like little spoons, this is a sign that you have an iron deficiency. If you have pinholes on your nails, this can indicate a dairy intolerance or an autoimmune condition. So, I've covered a lot of information in a short amount of time with you today. I wanted to give you some basic signs that you can start looking for so that you can start tracking how your gut health is doing. I hope your brain isn't going to explode right now. <laughs> In summary, poke your tongue out and have a really good look at it. Monitor your bowel motions as this is a great sign of what is actually happening in your gut. And look at your nails. Let's check those signs out and see if anything is actually showing for you. All of these signs change depending on what's happening in your gut and in your body. First of all, what I'd love for you to do is scroll down, hit the Facebook like, and hit that share button because everybody loves to get likes. And then what I really want you to do is scroll down and leave a comment. I'd love to hear how this is going to fit into your life. I'll be personally reading and responding to as many comments as I can. Thanks for watching everyone. Ka kite Arnold. I'm Helena Davis. Have an awesome week.